Let's take a look at this book, The Lewis Chessman Unmasked. It was published in 2010 by the National Museums of Scotland. So it's a very author authoritative book. Um, it was made to go with a very special showing of the Lewis Chessmen where they were all brought together, um, which is rarely done. Some are held in the British Museum, some in the Museum in Scotland. And um, this book is probably the first forensic account of modern research into the Chessmen. You see it's got a lot of very good pictures in it and just some very clear explanations of why they believe what they believe about where it came from, who made it, um, what happened to it, and so on. Let's just look at it real quickly. It's only 80 pages, so it's, um, it's a quick read, but it's very, very important information for anybody who's interested in these sets. Also, um, some of the pictures are just outstanding, and many of the pictures are the pieces that are not so often shown. There are actually 59 of the regular large pieces that were found. Also, 19 pawns were found, but most attention is given to the large pieces with faces. Once again, a piece that's not so often shown is featured in this page here. As I was saying, a lot of forensic information, comparison of the pieces, this is one of the larger pieces, what we're most familiar with, but there were also smaller size pieces uh, found along with them. So there were four sets found, minus five pieces, and um, some were of this large, about three and a half inch king size. Some were of the smaller three inch king size. They have figured out how they go together and so on. Here's a map talking about where they were probably found. Now for a long time that's been supposed that they were found around this bay here. I'm not sure how you pronounce this, Eug, something like that. Um, up in, uh, this is the Isle of Lewis, Scotland. And um, they're saying that, in this book, that it's more likely they were found way down here in Mayalasta, it's about 60 kilometers south of the original um, believed spot. So here's a little discussion about why they believe that. One of the early handlers of the Lewis Chessmen here, there's a lot of changing hands and dealing with them when they were first discovered. And um, that's how they ended up, partly in Scotland, partly in Britain. And here's a picture of the area where they were probably found now. There's very little sign of civilization there now, but when these chess pieces existed um, around the mid-12th century, um, there was more going on there, and uh, they discuss the archaeological evidence for that. Once again, more pictures comparing the pieces. One of the things that's really especially extraordinary about this book is that it gives you a good picture of every single piece, every single one of the 59 pieces found, and then proceeds to analyze them, how they probably went together in a set, a few other things that were found with them upon some uh, checker-like uh, draughts were found, a buckle, some odd things like that. But um, it compares them continually and discusses uh, the different shapes um, how they represent the uh, dress and symbology from the place that they were believed to have been made, which by the way is Trondheim in Norway, it's the most likely place for these. Uh, comparison of the famous berserker guy biting his shield and a, a regular what they call warden, which is actually a rook of that period. Some early sketches of the pawns, very uh, detailed pictures of the um, back of the piece there more comparisons, um, discussion of why they were uh, probably made in 12th century Scandinavia. As I said, a lot of uh, evidence there regarding the materials and the styling. Um, why um, they were on the Isle of Lewis, that's a very important issue, especially contentious actually for people who want to say that they were actually, they actually belonged in Scotland and therefore perhaps should be returned to Scotland and those who say they were just passing through Scotland on their way somewhere else. This book maintains that it's very likely that they're actually being used in Scotland and one of the pieces of evidence for that is that many of the pieces were apparently uh, replacements not made at the same time 
the, uh, the most of the pieces were made, the more discussion about the uh, styling of them. And then the actual analysis, forensic analysis of them shows that there were probably five main craftsmen making the sets, and they can tell this by subtleties and different styling, especially of the face, where each one had a slightly different convention for rendering a face in general and then applied it to the various pieces that that particular craftsman worked on. So five different ones were made and then this uh, they're cataloged so that you can see which ones of the uh, many that they show are probably made by the same craftsman. And then many that were made by um, different craftsmen, that, many that were not up to the same standard, many that were definitely different styles, but then mixed in. So it shows that the sets existed for quite a while and um, long enough to have replacements made, you know, to be like in the kingdom or the family or, or whoever exactly held these very special chessmen. Here's an analysis of how they probably went together and what they um, which ones were by which uh, person, etc. And it refers to those pictures that I showed you, so you can cross-reference and always find out exactly what they're talking about. It's a very, very sophisticated look at the chessmen, but also very clear, very easy to read. Um, it's, it's very strong evidence that they were from Trondheim, Norway, discussed there. And then there's some discussion about uh, the milieu of chess in that area in general with some other looks at pieces, um, and a little comment about the legacy of the chessmen. They, they've just been through a lot, and many stories have been told about them, mostly fictitious, um, since they were so fascinating and stirred so much imagination. I just happen to have a few uh, samples of, uh, um, not the actual pieces, of course, uh, I would not be allowed to touch them without uh, a personal letter from the Queen, I'm sure. But um, here's some very nice reproductions that I happen to have. And I also, um, for your interest, I have some productions of uh, reproductions of Scandinavian style uh, medieval chessmen that have other stylings. And this one also borrows something from the Lewis chessmen. And uh, for your further information along those lines, here are some uh, pictures of uh, chessmen from the 1937 publication. Uh, chessmen in that same style, more or less, uh, the Scandinavian medieval design is apparent there. So once again, what I'm recommending for everybody interested in the Lewis Chessmen is this, the Lewis Chessmen Unmasked, the latest, most authoritative, and thoroughly researched um, information about the Lewis Chessmen, where they're from, what they were doing there, and what they really look like.